Let's cover the MSCI World Index by going over the index fact sheet. And why does this even matter? Well, maybe you just want to educate yourself more about personal finance and investment opportunities, then it's good for that. And maybe you've seen this as a fun selection in your corporate pension plan where it's very common and you're just interested about learning more about this selection opportunity. Well, in both of those cases, then you've come to the correct video. Let's just get right into it. Let's walk through the entire fact sheet and I will also use some different personal situation examples for different made up people to just really drill home the point on how you can think regarding selections in these cases. So first things first, what does MSCI even stands for? Well, it's Morgan Stanley Capital International. And just looking at the first paragraph of this fact sheet, we'll learn that the MSCI World Index captures large and mid cap representations. So this means that it's equity, so stocks, not bonds, and it's mid size and large size market capitalization, right? So this is basically the total value of the company, yeah? All right, so constituents, we see it covers developed markets, not emerging markets, right? This is going to be interesting later on to see how is the fund diversifying globally. All right, so first part of the fact sheet done. What about second part? Second part here talks about performance, so gross returns. And they do this in percentage points and they do it annualized in this case. So if we just take a look at the MSCI world here, we can see that since 1987, basically, the average return of this fund has been 8.17%. Is this good? Is this bad? Well, pretty much depends on you, yeah? However, <clears throat> if you were really, really sharp here and you were looking at the screen and not just listening, then you noticed here in this graph Andreas, what are you talking about? They're not giving 8% every year. Look here, 2022, minus 17.73% that year. And then the year before that, it was up 22%. And if we look at 2016, well, yeah, fair enough. It's pretty close here to the average that the fund has been giving. How come? <clears throat> well, this leads us nicely into the second part of this fact sheet. Now we're talking about risk, all right? And the measurement of risk in a lot of cases will be standard deviations. This is part of statistics. It's not super complicated. It's just a measure of how much up and down from the mean that the results are, all right? So what do I mean by this purely, you know, concrete, all right? So let's say that in a given year, the average will be 8.17%. So in most cases, in most years, well, we're going to get 8.17 plus minus, and then we look at this 10 year average here of standard deviation, 14.68. So in most cases, within one standard deviation. This is going to be a very common case and we're going to see more outliers Then it's going to be two standard deviations away. We're going to capture even more. But in most cases, one standard deviation is going to capture a lot of the outcomes. So once again, we walk over it, 8.17%, so plus 14% here in this case. So we're going to get you know, 10, 22, something, 22 on the higher end, 23, something. And you're going to see that here, 22, 16, all right, so this one, 2019, we get into two standard deviations away. And here, you know, within one, within one, within one, within one. So in a lot of cases, it's going to be within one standard deviation. So that's the expected return that we get. So hopefully that concept becomes clearer and you 
you know, don't just look at the average return, but you also look at standard deviation. And given how long you can hold, this is going to matter more or less for you. Then the second part here of the risk is something called sharp bear ratio. And this is basically calculating the risk to reward ratio. And I'm not going to lie, this sharper ratio is not super good in the, my opinion. But don't just stare blindly at this. The formula is complicated. The ratio, I mean, as long as you're happy with the return and you think that the risk is manageable, I won't stare too much at this and just make my selection purely based on this. Why? Well, let's take, for example, an interest-bearing fund that's just investing in short-term interest instruments and it has 3% every year super safe it does that almost every year and it's basically zero point no something percents deviation when we look at this one well we if we do the standard sharp ratio calculation then this is going to give a very high sharp ratio it's going to give great risk to return yeah we're sure we're gonna get three percent almost every year but if we just look at long-term results then maybe that's not what you're after. But what are you after then? Well, of course, it depends on your situation, your age. Let's say that you just want to live comfortably. And let's say that you can do this on 2.5k US dollars every year. How much are you going to need then to be able to get this passively? Let's do some quick maths. All right, let's say capital gains tax is 30% and inflation is 2%. Well, then you're going to need 750K. And if you get 8% return every year, you're going to live on 4% of that. You're going to pay 2% in the taxes and you're going to reinvest 2% to keep up with inflation. And you're basically going to get 2.5K every month passively regard regardless if you're you know working or not isn't that every person's dream well maybe not maybe you want to have a big yacht and you want to chill in palma in spain along with all the other big yachts or whatever the american equivalent maybe miami is the place where everyone has their yachts i don't know let me know in the comments below if you know but then you're going to need 10 million American dollars just to buy what most people consider a yacht. Well, can you get there with a fund like this? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Once again, it depends on your income, you know, and situation, and we have an inheritance, etc. However, let's say that you get 100k. Most people can get 100k. And let's say you invest it for... 30 years not doing any more investment you're just coasting basically you take this 100k and you put it in i did some calculations on it and i saw with 17 percent return each year you know a lot higher than the average for this fund in 30 years you're going to get 11 point something million from that so yes you're going to get a yacht a crew not much else from that, but hopefully you have some other income. But what does that tell about selection of funds? Well, if that's your goal and you know that's the situation, then you can't be happy with the 8% every year. But if you just want to live comfortably, like in the first example, then this would be more than enough. So this is why it really depends and we also see you know age how close are you to retirement can you take minus 17 percent all of a sudden well this is up to the individual person do you have a family do you have a lot of liabilities do you need the money to live on within two or three years all of these different factors needs to be weighed in but Let's get back to the fact sheet. Let's finish it off. Let's make sure you get this knowledge about the MSCI World Index. So you really can make sure that, okay, this is for me. This is not for me. We've gone over the, the start of it. We looked at 
average return, we looked at the risk. Now we're going to take a look at some of the diversification that's in this fund. What's going on here? We see that top, fem, uh, top 10 investments here. We see American companies here, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. All right. Under here, this is basically fluff to me, value, relatively inexpensive stocks. This tells me nothing. I looked at the price to earnings ratio a bit higher. This tells you more about value. However, this is just fluff, in my opinion. Momentum rising stocks. All right, how do they even characterize this? Yield, cash flow paid out. Okay, sounds a lot like dividend stocks. You're going to have the utilities companies in that. We can see sector waste down here. I think this is way better. Of course, United States, almost 70% of the index. And indeed, the United States is a super large player in the world economy. The GDP is massive. A lot of the big companies come from America. And then we can see on second place here, Japan with 6% and United Kingdom, other developed economies, basically. We can also see here utilities, 2.78%. These are general, generally dividend paying stocks. So that would be the yield, I guess. And sure, energy pays a lot of dividends as well. And uh, real estate has done in the past. Let's see if they continue to pay out now, given the, the turmoil. Then information technology tends to be more momentum, more growth stocks, but I'm generalizing now. You just see here the sector weight and the country weight. So indeed, it's quite diversified. However, we can see America, a large, large player here. So what can you, as you know, a potential investor, learn from this? Well. Maybe you're super bearish on America and you don't want exposure exposure to them. Then you know, okay, this fund is not for me. Maybe you're very bullish on America and you want some exposure to other developed economies as well. Okay, then the investment philosophy here is more in line with your thoughts and your wishes, basically. So just some interesting facts here on the bottom. This middle part here I didn't like in my opinion and then we will have the standard disclaimers you know all the investment carries risk and don't invest more than you're prepared to lose etc etc typical in a fact sheet all right I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of the MSCI world index fact sheet and as always hope you make a ton of money whatever investments you decide to make take care now bye bye